Hi, it's Gareth Williams here from secureyourwallet.com. We're going to have a look at Multibit Bitcoin Wallet. So a good place to start is bitcoin.org. So I'm going to head back over to bitcoin.org. I'm going to go down here and click on Multibit. Now, Multibit is a third-party wallet. It's not developed by the original Bitcoin developers. But the fact that they are recommending it on the main Bitcoin website they means they're endorsing it and you can be pretty sure that this is a safe wallet to use. Now, Multibit is what's known as a thin wallet. It's not a thick wallet like Bitcoin QT. So it doesn't download the entire blockchain to your computer, which is good because it means you can get up and running with Multibit in just a few minutes and you can use it on devices like notebooks and small devices where you know it's the client's not going to take up much room on your actual device so i'm going to go through downloading and installing multibit and just sort of go through the interface and show you how multibit works and what it looks like so we're going to head over to multibit and uh, i'm going to go to download the windows installer i'm just going to save it now i already have it downloaded so we don't need to run through the download so I'm going to click run and we're just going to go through a standard Windows installation. I'm going to accept all the defaults, click next, accept the license, next, create shortcuts. And unlike Bitcoin QT, it creates a desktop shortcut that you can see down here in the bottom left straight away. Click next and we are done. So I'm going to open up Multibit now. And you can see in the bottom left, it's saying it's connecting and it says it's online. It's doing some synchronizing with the network. I think it downloads some Bitcoin blockchain headers. So you can be up and running, you know, very quickly, depending on your internet speed. Now, while it's just synchronizing, I'll run you through the interface. So it gives you this little welcome screen. We'll just close out of that. Now, on the left over here, this is where your wallets are stored. Now, it puts one wallet in by default, and you can give your wallet a name. So, if you click here, all right, Gareth's wallet. There's one very important thing to note straight away. This little square here, this yellow square, this indicates that your wallet is not password protected. So, one of the first things you should definitely do is go in and password protect your wallet. So if I click on this, it brings up this help thing about password protecting your wallet. And what we want to do is go to file, add a password. So I recommend that you use a very secure password in here. So a good password would be a, a long password that's a combination of some capital letters, some uh, numbers and some symbols. Um, you could also use a system like KeyPass. That's a very good system to use. And in fact, I'm going to do a video on this at some point and go through how to use KeyPass. There's also a website called HowSecureIsMyPassword.net. And if you put your password in there, it'll tell you how many, how many years or millions of years it's going to take to crack your password. So make sure you put a very secure password in here. I'm just going to put my standard password. So it gives a little green tick to indicate it's fine. I'm going to add the password to my wallet. So now my wallet is password protected. So nobody can jump on my machine and go onto my multi-bit wallet and just send all my Bitcoins to their address. Because in order to do this, they are now going to have to enter my password if they want to send any Bitcoins anywhere else. So that's the first thing you should definitely do. And now, if you look over here, you can see this is padlock indicating that this wallet is now password protected. So I'm just going to close down these two little screens. So you've got your sending window here, and this is where you would paste in the address of the, the, the wallet address of where you want to send Bitcoins to. In the request area, you have your address. So this is the address, your public address that you give out on the internet or give out to other people and people can send you bitcoins to this address 
and then you'd have your transactions history here listing all the different send and receive transactions you've done. If you go up to the top right hand side you can see the current Bitcoin price in US dollars. It's getting this from the Mt. Gox um, exchange. Now currently there's a lot of problems with Mt. Gox as I'm recording this video. People can't withdraw their Bitcoins so there's a lot of selling pressure on there so the price on Mt. Gox is actually very low so you might want to change to a different exchange. So you can either click on here to bring up the preferences or you can go up to the view menu and go down to preferences. So we're going to change to a different exchange. We'll go to Bitstamp. We'll have it in dollars and what you can also do is have a second row so you could have another exchange BTC and you could say I want to see it in euros. You can also change the look and feel of Multibit so you could say let's have it in this Nimbus look which will give it a sort of rounded edge and we'll apply these changes and now you can see Multibit's interface has changed and up here you can see the price of the current Bitcoin price in US dollars from Bitstamp it's 640 so it's a lot a lot higher on Bitstamp than it is on Mt. Gox and you can see the price in euros from BTC so that's the preferences so another area to look at is the tools menu if we click on tools you can see this option here export private keys now this is a very important option because you should definitely make a copy of your private keys your private key is the key that unlocks your public key um, this should be kept secret and only yourself should know it but you need to keep a copy of this because if you lose your laptop gets lost or stolen or your hard drive crashes as long as you've got that private key you can go back in and you can recover your public key and you can recover your funds that are within that, pub that Bitcoin address. The other option is this one at the bottom reset blockchain and transactions. Now I've had it before that I've had Bitcoin sent to my multibit wallet and although it's showing up in my wallet as there it's not actually allowing me to use those funds they're saying they're unavailable and it's sort of it's not getting it confirmed properly so if you do a reset reset the blockchain option it resynchronizes with the network and after I did this then that Bitcoin became available and my wallet was showing the correct amount of Bitcoin in there so that's a quick tour around Multibit. Now one last thing before we go, I want to go back over to the roaming folder and I want to just show you the um, Multibit folder. So we go back over to C, Users, Spare, App, go into the roaming folder. Now there's our Bitcoin QT folder that we installed earlier. Currently it's got 309 meg in it. It's still busy downloading those that blockchain data and it's going to get a lot bigger than that. Down here is our multibit folder and that's only 640 kilobits in size and it won't really get any bigger than that. So you can see the footprint of multibit on your computer is so much smaller than the actual Bitcoin QT client. That will eventually get to about 16 gigabits and it'll continue to grow as the blockchain grows over time. So that was a quick review of Multibet. Hopefully you found this video useful. If so, please like, post comments underneath or subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is Secure Your Wallet. You could also have a look at my website, which is www.secureyourwallet.com. On there, I've got lots of comprehensive reviews of different Bitcoin wallets and lots of information relating to Bitcoin security. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.